Hey everybody, welcome to Elementary at Home with Crossing Kids. I'm your host, Claire Novak, and I am so glad you guys are here. We are gonna be talking about the promises that God has made and fulfilled this unit. We are gonna be talking about the life of Abraham. Who was Abraham? Why is he an important person that we need to learn about? Well, guess what? From the very first book of the Bible, Genesis, all through the whole of scripture, we hear about Abraham. So what can we learn about promises that God made him through learning about his life? Because guess what? God is good. He keeps his promises and he is faithful to them. But before we dive into that, I bet you're wondering, oh, what's with all the cookies? Well, let me tell you. So I have with me a whole bunch of cookies. Look at these, there's a star one. <gasps> this looks like maybe Mars, the red planet. I've got a burning sun. I think this one is Earth. Guess what? We are gonna be doing a really cool cookie taste testing later. But before we get into that. Sweet, what I, somebody brought oh, cookies. Cut, hey, cut, 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 Jeff. Hey, Jeff, I just saw the cookie, I heard cookies and cookies. I thought no, usually look, we can. look. We're filming for elementary at home for Crossing Kids. I'm sorry, guys. Sorry, Claire. I'm gonna get out of your hair. I just I it's heard fine, cookies, and I thought I'm here. The cookies are here. Yeah. Maybe I could we could fine. arrange. It's fine, Jeff. Okay, yeah. yeah. Thanks. Wait, wait, Good wait. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. You're a pastor, right? Yeah. Yeah, I am. Yeah. Do you know a lot about the promises of God? I mean, yeah. Okay. Here's an idea. Do you want to be interviewed for my show? Well, I. They are so kind to ask. I've got some stuff to do. I've got some. I will let you do the cookie taste testing with me after if you do it. So if we do th this, then I can have, okay, uh -huh. uh, let's, yeah, that's great. What do we need to do? Let's, awesome, yeah. let's start. Okay, okay, Natalie, you can start start filming again. All right, great. Uh, I never stop. Oh, okay, cool, 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 that's Sorry. fine. Um, all right, so where to begin? Let me see, Abraham. I bet you know who Abraham is. Yeah, Claire, Abraham's kind of a big deal. You can't graduate from seminary without knowing about Abraham. We meet him in the book of Genesis in the Bible. Oh my gosh, Jeff, where right did here. that come from? Well, it's my big Bible. It's the living and active word of God. And you just had it with you. The Bible's big and I have a lot of questions about it. So I need a big Bible so I can do a lot of learning. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. All right, so Abraham. You first meet him, you said, in Genesis. Genesis? That's right, Claire. We first meet Abraham in Genesis, the first book of the Bible. But it's interesting, when we first meet him, his name is actually Abram. And his wife's name is Sarai. Abram and Sarai are living in a land called Ur. It's this really sad place where people have forgotten God and are worshiping false gods, and it's a really sad situation. So God calls Abram and Sarai to go to a different land, a land called Canaan, where he'll work through Abraham's life to fulfill his promises to his people. Okay, but hold on. Yeah. Wouldn't that be like a really big deal for God to ask them to uproot and move? Like, I mean, back then, wasn't um, like living with your immediate family and your extended family, didn't that provide like a sense of security for people? Oh, it was a huge deal, Claire. For Abram and Sarai to leave where Abram's family was would be a huge risk. It would take a lot of trust and faith to be able to do something like that. Okay, so what were some of the promises that God made him? God made some big promises to Abram. He said that through him and his family, he would grow his descendants and to be more people than number the stars in the sky. Think about that for a second. How many stars are in the sky? Have you ever tried to count them? It's unfathomable. Think of how big God's promise to Abram was, to promise that his family would grow to be a nation that big. And not only that, Claire, God promised to grow Abram's family, but also promised that through Abram's family, he would bless the whole world. Okay, that is a massive promise. So what did Abram do? Abram believed God. He believed that God would do what he said, that he would work through his family to grow them, but also to bless the whole world through them. Man, that must have taken so much trust in the promise that God had given him. Okay, so what happens next? Well. You'll have to find out on the next episode of Elementary at Home with Crossing Kids. Jeff, how do you know that? I'm a pastor. We just, we know some things. No, it's actually on your show notes right there. Oh, yeah, Jeff, got you got me. Yeah, I know, I know. You I know. You well, Claire, now that we talked about Abram and Genesis, there were these cookies we were going to think about, maybe think about trying yeah. eventually. Yeah. Can that 
happen now. No! First, we're going to test the knowledge of the kids at home and see how well they were listening. It's time for an episode of Know Your Bible! Hello and welcome to Know Your Bible, the game show that tests your biblical knowledge. I'm your host, Genevieve Papadopoulos. Kids at home, I sure hope that you were listening to Pastor Jeff as he taught us about the promises that God made to Abram. Let's meet our contestants. First up, all the way from Sydney, Australia, we've got Harvey Stackman. Good day, mate. It's a pleasure to be here. I've never been in Missouri before. This is beautiful country. Terrific. And next up, all the way from Sweetwater, Minnesota, we've got Candy Patty. Well, hi there, Genevieve. It's so good to be here. You know, I had to take off a little bit of time from managing my quilting store, but it's okay because I left my assistant manager in charge. Well, it's it's my calico cat mittens, but I'm sure he's holding down the fort all right because, you know, four paws are better than one hand. <laughs> Not sure that I followed all of that, but we are so glad you're here. And let's meet our final contestant. We've got Mr. Sam Blanford, who's a human resources director for a toy company. Oh, that sounds fun. HR is not fun. HR is serious business, very serious. Okay, no, what I meant was uh, it must be fun to work for a manufacturer of toys. I mean, I assume you get to play with the toys? I'm in HR, not product testing, but <laughs> I do get to oversee all the tax documents for 150 employees, so I guess you could say my job is kind of fun. Well, you are a quirky bird, aren't you? <laughs> Nevertheless, we are so glad you're here. Now, before... We hear our first question. Let's hear what you're playing for. Do you ever get tired of brightly colored stickers making your artwork too busy? Well, that will be a problem of the past if you're the lucky winner of this sticker inverse book. Definitely worth playing for. All right, kids at home, I hope you're ready for our first question. Now, when we are first introduced to Abram, he lived in the city of Ur. What? was wrong with the people living in Ur. Oh, they probably didn't have enough Vegemite in their diet. I've seen this before. I believe that a steady diet of Vegemite and bread can get you No, 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 I am so sorry, Harvey, that is incorrect. Uh, Vegemite had not been invented until the year 1922 and had nothing to do with Abram, the city of Ur, or the people living there. Um. The people had forgotten the God who created them, and instead they were worshiping false gods or idols. That is correct! Kids at home, did you get that right? Ten points to Candy. All right, contestants, question two. What did God tell Abram to do? I believe he told them to go to war with the people of Earth. No, I'm sorry, that's wrong. Anyone else? Oh, God told Abram to get out of there. He said, go to this super cool land. I'll show you, you're going to love it. You and Sarai are going to have a whole bunch of babies, more than all the stars in the sky. All right, uh, judges, what do we think? Oh, yes, they are telling oh, us no. that is correct, oh, sort of. God did indeed tell Abram to leave the land of Haran and continue west toward Canaan. Right, to the land that he would show him. And God did also promise to give Abraham more descendants than the stars in the sky. Great job. Ten points on the board for Harvey. And Candy, I am so glad you were listening too. All right, next question. Who was Sarai. Abram's aunt? No. Abram's best sheep. Wrong again. Abram's wife. Guys, were you listening to Pastor Jeff at all? It looks like Candy is in the lead with 20 points right now. Harvey is trailing her with 10, and Sam is in dead last with nothing on the board. Moving on to question four. Would it be difficult to Abram and Sarai 
to leave everything and travel to the land God would show them? It depends. Is his resume up to date? Is his LinkedIn profile up to date? Does he know anybody where he's moving to? You know, in that business economy... Sam, what are you talking about? <laughs> this story is from the book of Genesis, the first book of the Bible, and takes place roughly 4,000 years ago. There were no resumes, computers, LinkedIn. There certainly wasn't a business economy. Anyone else? Would it be hard for Abram and Sarai? Oh, no way. Super easy, barely an inconvenience. It would be incredibly difficult. Abram, leaving his father's house like this was basically unheard of at that time. He would be traveling with his herds and flocks through unknown lands. And there, there was no Google Maps or TripAdvisor, and there was no one that they knew that could tell them about the land. So they were going into uncharted territory. My goodness, Candy, you are certainly playing to win today. That is absolutely correct. Friends at home, did you get that question right? It's time for our final question of the day. Did Abram believe God? Did he believe God would bless him and bless the world through him? Oi, oi, oh, it's a tricky one. I got it in there. I got to wrestle it like a guy didn't get it. I got it. I don't, I, don't, I don't got it. I believe this may be a trick question. No, it's not a trick question at all. It's a simple yes or no answer. No. Yes, the answer is yes. Abram trusted the God who created him, the one who made the promise. That is absolutely correct, Candy. Well done. Well, friends at home, I hope you got that question right. Candy is the clear winner of today's game. Candy, it looks like you, say it with me, know, know your, your Bible. Bible. <laughs> Thanks for playing. That was such a fun game. I hope you guys had fun playing along at home. All right, well, Jeff, we're pretty much done now, so you can get back to whatever it was you were doing. Well, I thought we were gonna eat these cookies. Are we gonna eat the cookies? Yes, we're gonna eat the cookies. Okay. Okay, right. do you notice anything interesting about them? Well, all of the cookies are kind of like, you know, space themed. It's like, a, did you pick these cookies out? Because in the Bible story, we, we learned about how God made this promise to Abram that his descendants would be as numerous as the stars in the sky, and they look you know delicious, what? but they also seem to weave into the narrative I that you were- I didn't even think about that. Oh, wow, that's- I'm yeah. totally joking. Of course that's why they're space oh. themed. Well, oh my goodness. They look gorgeous. Well, they let's get really to wonderful. it then. Cookie number one. Ooh, this is a beautiful burning sun. Jeff, did you mm. know that the sun is actually a star? A star in the, like a, in the sky. Yes, yes. Guys, all huh. of those twinkling lights that you see up in the night sky that we think and call stars, they're actually suns that are burning, burning, and they are so far away. In fact, the way that we measure... Jeff, oh. what are you doing? I'm a star. Oh, the sun. It's fine. I'm sorry, it's crumbly. You know what? It's fine. Mm -hmm. It's fine. Gosh, you know what goes so great with this? Claire, I brought my own cup of milk. You came prepared. All right, well, let's get to it then. What did you think of the sun? I didn't get to taste it, so I'm gonna try it. Slightly crumbly. Mm. Mm. But quite delicious. This makes me think of the British Bake Off. Do you wanna oh. do this? Do we do this segment with British, British accents? accents? Okay. All right. Mm. Yes, so, mm. Mm. the crumbability of the sun cookie is mm, slightly dry, but I do, I do think I like it. You see here, the color of the frosting is, is quite gorgeous, but, mm. when you, but when you crumble it, it crumbles, mm. and the crumbleability is quite crumbly. Right, so I don't know our rating scale, so, but yes. I do think this was a pretty cookie. Now yes, let's, yeah. let's, quite, let's quite. test our breakability. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. You want to wishbone this one? Oh yeah, quite, quite, quite. Ready? Okay. One, two, three, oh! oh. What do we think this one tastes like? It reminds me of New Yorker in a, a fall evening. Mm. You've got the aroma of your neighbor barbecuing, the dog down the street doing his business. 
A dog barbecue? No, it tastes like a yummy sugar cookie. Metaphorically <laughs> speaking, this one reminds us of a backyard barbecue. <laughs> I don't know if I like it as much as the sun one. You ate the entire sun. What did you think? Well, after eating the entire sun, it really illuminated the uh, the flavors. <laughs> Right illuminated. Did you get no, that? that? Let's just shine a little bit of light on the. <laughs> let's shine some light on the. The flavor profile was certainly more mm. complex than the All star. Right. Well, I say we take a deep sea dive into Ooh. the Earth cookie. Now there is only one Earth cookie. I want to make sure I get part of a continent. I think I've got Antarctica there. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. This one's lemon. I mm. love lemon cookies. Mmm. The tart, it certainly mm. goes through the whole cookie. You know. There's a lovely acidity to the earth cookie that I quite like. Is right. there a bit of lavender in there? It's a sort of a bit of lemon, lemon lavender. Lemon lavender cookie. Okay, so for me so far, I'm thinking I like the earth one. I like the earth one the best. We've oh, got we've got red planets. So and a yellow planet. Is that one supposed to be the gas giant? Do you know which planet is the gas giant? <laughs> it's you? Is it Jupiter? I think it is. We really Natalie, don't know. Can you, Natalie, fact check that. Get back to us. Is the gas giant Jupiter? I think the one might be Saturn, though. Oh. All right, so let's taste this one. All right. So Does it taste Earth gassy? Mm. The ashiest cookie. Mm. I will say that the the frosting's got a little bit of a it's got a little bit of an edge to it. You mm. know? I don't know. I feel like the crumbability on this one was not as good. I'm going to say this one was is crumbly. Yeah, the, cr the crumbles are no. certainly... Okay, so our last cookie to try. It is low bread planets. That's Mars, right? Is yeah. it Mars the red planet? The red planet. Okay. Yeah. Is it cinnamon? Tell me, tell me, tell me. Well, it's like a red hot. So if you took a red hot, melted it down, mm -hmm. took out all the impurities and put it on mm. a cookie, it's refined. Spicy kind of, the, the frosting. Yeah. It's hot, like the planet. Ah. Hmm. Yeah, I think. Okay. Mm. The aftertaste is bringing out mm. some flavors that I never experienced before. All right, have we tried? I think we've tried every type of cookie. I think I know what my clear winner is. Do you have a clear I've winner? I've got a clear winner, <clears throat> yeah. Why don't we say it on three? All right. One, two, three. Earth. Earth. Oh, what? No, yes, that's let's go Earth. Earth. Guys, all we have left to do is go over our memory verse and this song to help you remember it for this month. So, Jeff, the memory verse is from Hebrews 10:23. Off the top of your head, do you know what Hebrews 10:23 is? Of course I do, but I haven't memorized in <laughs> Greek, so I can't do it right now. Um, Pretty good. It is. I don't. Know. Let us hold. Fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. All right, guys, check out this uh, memory verse song for this month. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, no. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, no. For he who promised is faithful, faithful. For he who promised is faithful. For he who Confession of our hope without wavering, no. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, no. For he who promised is faithful, faithful. For he who promised is faithful. For he who Yeah, 
is always faithful to his many promises made long ago to you to me he says hold on he makes your lives with a wait wait you know jesus christ a great reward for every heart every heart has been longing for from abraham to the day jesus christ has been the way been the way wait, wait. so we said as we lift our hands up high we trust god beyond the sight as we lift our hands up high we trust god beyond the sight as we lift our hands up high For he who promised is faithful, I know, I know. For he who promised is faithful, faithful, he's faithful. For he who promised is faithful, faithful. For he who promised is faithful. For he who promised is faithful, faithful, he's faithful. had so much fun watching today. We have learned a lot of great stuff about Abraham and the promises that God gave him. And we're going to learn more about Abraham this unit. I hope that you can remember that God is good. We can trust him because he is faithful to keep his promises. Thanks for watching, guys.